Tesla might be the world leader right now in the electric vehicle marketplace, but in the last few months, we have seen huge amounts of progress from legacy automakers, all eager to play catch up. We've seen much more investment in electric vehicle development. We've seen products teased, revealed, and showcased. And we're starting to see significant numbers of spy shots on an almost daily basis of prototype electric vehicles in varying amounts of camouflage, doing everything from taking on the Nürburgring in Germany to stopping at the local quick charging station for a little drink of electrons. Of course, all of this hasn't been plain sailing. Some automakers are already being accused by hardened EV fans of being half-assed in their approach, of not being serious about their promises made to electrify their fleets. Some people are even taking pre-launch computer-generated videos and photographs as proof that the automakers in question are lying, don't have a vehicle, and do not intend to bring anything meaningful to market. While some people have been rightly cautious of some of the promises being made, I mean, let's face it, electric vehicle fans have been burned way too many times in the past to just believe a press release. I've been musing on a different track. I think there's a civil war coming, an EV civil war. And between the automakers taking part, it's going to be messy and it's going to be complicated. Car companies are going to overreach in their attempts to gain market share. They'll all be looking for the best range and the fastest charging and some companies will screw up while others will succeed. Ultimately though, I think it's going to benefit everyone. Or rather, it's going to be great for anyone and everyone who wants to see electric vehicles in the marketplace. If you are someone who doubts that legacy automakers can even make an electric car, let alone make enough to have a major impact on the marketplace or even attract any sales, I'll admit you are probably laughing right now and calling me names, but given the electric vehicle platforms being developed and the statements being made, I think we're about to see a massive shift in the plug-in vehicle world that will begin a brand new brave stage in the electric vehicle history books. Let me explain. In the last decade, the electric vehicle market has been dominated by Tesla. Sure, there have been other electric vehicles, most of which were competent offerings, albeit with limited range in performance and a premium price point. But for the most part, Tesla has dominated the public consciousness and the public perception of electric cars. And when I say public here, I mean the majority of the non-electric vehicle owning public who don't know a whole lot about electric vehicles beyond the fact that they exist. The success of Tesla has meant that automakers who once dismissed Tesla as a joke are now rapidly investing in electric vehicle programs. Part of that, of course, could be down to fear about losing a market share to Tesla and other automakers who already have competent electric vehicles in the marketplace. But part of that, I think, a larger part, is down to increasingly tightened emission standards coming into effect around the world that and the various internal combustion vehicle sales bans that are expected to become law in many countries in the next 5 to 15 years. And as Kodak and Nokia have proven, companies that don't change suffer the consequences. So let's look at this war. It's one not for the custom of hardened EV fans or Tesla owners or indeed anyone who's expressed serious interest in electric cars to this point. It's for regular people who are all currently driving gasoline and diesel powered vehicles. And to be really clear, this is not a war to beat Tesla. This is a competition between legacy automakers to see who will win and who will lose in the rush to electrify the world's fleet. Legislation is now making electric vehicles the likely future fuel choice, and so every single automaker with a desire to survive is eager to find a way of converting its existing customers to electric without actually losing those customers to a rival brand. And of course, they all want to pick up those conquests from the rival brands in the process. This war most definitely won't be about how quickly you can accelerate from zero to 60. It's pointless. It won't be about how many autonomous features or over-the-air updates the car has. It'll be about cost, functionality, and ease of use. And getting that remaining 98% or so of vehicles in the world converted to electric. So let's look at the companies I think are currently in contention in this civil war, detail why I think they are heading into that war, and discuss what the implications might be of this major new competitive streak in the EV marketplace. Hint, it's good for you. 
These brands are, in no particular order, Volkswagen, General Motors, Stellantis, Ford and Hyundai Kia. You'll note that there are some companies missing from this list who make EVs. Nissan and Renault are absent at the moment, but that's because I've not seen anything super next generation or inspirational from either of these. And right now, while Honda and Toyota are expected to offer new electric models, we're still waiting for details, guys. But Volkswagen, General Motors, Stellantis, Hyundai Kia and Ford? Well, they've been sharing their plans. Volkswagen first. A recent study by UBS has stated, after an in-depth engineering teardown of a Volkswagen ID3, that, quote, the platform underpinning Volkswagen's EV models will be fully cost competitive with Tesla and boast best in class energy density and efficiency. End quote. Volkswagen has been given some significant flack by both EV fans and journalists for promising lots of vehicles and revealing lots of concepts over the years, but not actually bringing them to production. I gave them criticism. And a fair few years ago, that was a valid criticism. But in the last 12 months, we've seen the ID3 and ID4 successfully enter into production. Volkswagen has begun transitioning entire production facilities away from making internal combustion engine vehicles and turning them over to making EVs instead. And then there is the battery production partnerships. Volkswagen has announced battery facilities going to be operated in collaboration with various battery partners around the world. In the US, in case you're interested, it was meant to be SK Innovation. In Europe, it's Swedish firm Northvolt. And on top of those, it's got existing battery contracts with Samsung, LG Energy, and Cattle. And of course, Volkswagen's sister brands, Audi and Porsche, not to mention Skoda and Seat, are all pushing similarly hard on their own electric vehicle programs. Their platforms are modular, can accommodate a variety of different drivetrains and battery packs, and the battery packs themselves can charge at a range of power levels, most noticeably the highest rate, the 800 volt J1 platform on which the Porsche Taycan, Taycan Cross Turismo and Audi e-tron GT are based. Right now, those vehicles are, of course, way out of the price range of 99% of the population, but with its own battery facilities and plans to expand production, it is only a matter of time before we see the Volkswagen Group leverage that technology into more affordable vehicles. And then we have that mysterious Project Trinity. Teased in the last few months, it's expected to do everything that Volkswagen current EV platforms can do, and more faster charging, longer range, and maybe solid state batteries too, because Volkswagen is investing in solid state tech. Next up on our list of potential contenders in this mega EV civil war is General Motors. And I know what you're going to say. The recently announced Chevy Bolt EUV and refreshed Bolt EV are hardly cutting edge. And you are totally right. They're not because both have been built on a platform that is now pushing five or six years old. But the Altium battery being promised by General Motors, it has modular capabilities. It has similar battery pack options and charging capabilities and drivetrain configurations to Volkswagen's tech. That will literally bring GM next generation tech and it will make customers perk their ears up. 350 kilowatt DC quick charging will make charging shorter than ever before for any GM vehicle. The capability to produce high-end sports cars and heavy SUVs on the same platform, plus something more suited to a life as a daily family driver. Like Volkswagen, there are many unnamed vehicles that General Motors has not officially released, but we know a slew of new cars are coming, all underpinned by Altium. And with battery modules said to be future-proof and easily swapped on and worked on by service staff, it could reduce service costs and vehicle production costs as economies of scale come into play. Like Volkswagen, General Motors is working on its own battery production facility, this time in collaboration with LG Energy. And while its initial launch events were heavy on CGI vehicles, we've seen real-world prototypes of both the Cadillac Lyric and Hummer EV, the first two passenger cars from GM to use Altium technology, appearing in the real world. As one of America's largest automakers by volume, I think it would be foolish for us to assume that all of these new vehicles and GM's recent pledge to go all electric are just for show. Stellantis is next. 
In the US, Stellantis isn't really very much to get excited about, but in Europe, the PSA part of Stellantis, Peugeot, Citroen and Opel, is well and truly taking names of the slew of all new electric models. The Opel Mokka E, Opel E Corsa, Citroen C4e and Peugeot E208 are all making significant waves in the automotive marketplace. In fact, some of them have proven so popular that Stellantis has had to change its plans for production. These are some of the most affordable EVs on the market while retaining more than 100 kilowatt DC quick charging. And yes, while they still have pricing issues, like the fact that the Mokka E is so much more expensive than the Mokka, I believe that they really are the basis of some really good growth in the affordable family car market. Let's not forget the Fiat part of the group either. It already has the reborn Fiat 500e, which is a full generation or two beyond the compliance car that was rolling off the production lines under duress less than a decade ago. Fiat's been busy with its own vehicle to grid projects and through the merger with PSA to become Stellantis, both Fiat and its North American relatives, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge and Ram and others, will all get to benefit from the platform work done in Europe on making EVs with mainstream appeal. And yes, as you might have guessed, in Europe at least, Stellantis is working on its own battery production facility, working with Total on building a facility where its batteries will be made. Having batteries produced in-house is going to help it avoid a lot of headaches in the future. Then, of course, there's Ford. While Ford hasn't published as much as some of the other automakers on this list, its Mustang Mark E is getting some pretty good reviews. For a company that has been really late to the EV game, its first electric car seems very promising. And while Ford seems less prepared to go it alone, its partnership with Volkswagen on EVs should give it a massive leg up on EV drivetrains and battery tech. Then, of course, let's not forget its investment in and relationship with Rivian. Right now, Rivian is not known to be working on a vehicle for Ford, but it was certainly discussed in the past and then, sadly, subsequently cancelled. But Ford still holds a sizable chunk of investment in Rivian, and it wouldn't be doing that if it didn't perceive Rivian as having something to bring to the table to help Ford in the EV marketplace. But the real reason Ford is on the list is because of its promised F-150 electric. The F-Series pickup trucks are Ford's big moneymaker, and Ford is looking to electrify the F-150. It's also electrifying the Transit, but the E-Transit isn't a vehicle that will get many people excited because of poor specs. But the F-150, if it can deliver on specs, will be a very important vehicle to transition average car and truck drivers over to electric. And it will go head to head with whatever Chevy or Ram can produce, both of which are, of course, also on this list as potential contenders in the EV war. Finally, we have Hyundai Kia, two brands linked together that have made waves over the last two decades in internal combustion vehicles and which continue to chase an ever-increasing market share. It's these two brands which actually prompted me to make today's video because both have been quite busy lately. Hyundai recently unveiled the Ioniq 5 and earlier today, Kia showcased the Kia EV6. Unlike pretty much every other company on this list, Hyundai Kia's shared eGMP, Electric Global Modular Platform, to use its official name, is designed not only from the ground up to accommodate high voltage batteries, long range and rapid charging, but also provide emergency power. The vehicles we've seen so far that are based on that platform, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6, show that Unlike the claims made of both brands after they held very cryptic EV events, real vehicles exist and are being tested in the real world. They seem to be able to charge at the speeds claimed of them, and that will get many people on board. This is especially true for Kia's main market in many countries, affordable family crossovers, where charging time is going to be a key to getting people to make the switch. But so too is the availability of EGMB-based vehicles to provide mains power in an emergency. Just imagine a future freak weather event turning off your power and you happen to have an EGMB-based vehicle in your garage. Instead of having to faff around with 12-volt inverters or expensive vehicle-to-grid infrastructure or even a petrol generator, owners could literally just run an extension cord from their car to whatever they want to power, be it a small heater, a kettle, or some other essential electronic device that could make life a lot easier and safer during extended periods without power, all without voiding your warranty. Now we've talked about the contenders, how is this going to happen? Well, 
I think there's going to be a war on several different fronts. The first will be the fight for raw resources for battery materials. In the past, companies with their own battery production facilities have always fared better than those without, and I think this will continue in this instance. However, it's complicated because of the current battle between LG Energy and SK Innovation, and the US ITC's ruling that SKI cannot sell or manufacture battery cells in the US. That means the race to amass battery packs for EVs is going to be made harder, unless the US government steps in. Then, of course, there's the war trying to sell those vehicles to customers. And I'm going to predict that it will be more intense than anything we have today. Why? Well, in the light of most companies being forced to go all electric, either by market or by legislation, automakers who don't manage to make convincing, engaging, affordable, practical electric cars will basically lose out. And how do you compete against the competition? Yes, slash prices. You offer free charging and perks. And you incentivize people to make the switch. Ah, but Nikki, I hear some of you saying, why would these lazy legacy automakers, some of whom have never been serious about electric vehicles, suddenly start working hard to sell EVs? The answer? It's complicated. It's partly legislation, partly market trends, and partly the fear that they'll lose out to the other car companies or Tesla if they don't. Previously, most of these companies didn't have anything compelling enough to get buyers excited. But now I think they do. Super fast charging compared to previous models, far better range compared to previous models, and a variety of different models that should suit a variety of different use cases. The biggest challenge though is bringing those prices down, but I think market forces will force that to happen pretty quickly. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.